Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. A great thematic magic-filled showdown between Bond Clodger's High Elves and the Dark Elves led by Malekith. This is a multiplayer game, the Dark Elf Commander is just clearly a big fan of Malekith. We begin, as always, with a conversation about composition and deployment. Both sides keep things relatively simple, diagonally across from each other on the field. Let's start with the High Elves. You can see a princess is in charge atop a moon dragon. The front line consists of alternating white lines of Shrace and the Swordmasters of Hoeth. Then we have a unit of Phoenix Guard right behind them alongside Spearmen on either flank, and these guys are able to provide anti-large support up front if necessary, or of course pull back and protect these three archers if anything comes in from the sides or from the rears. And finally, we do have a mage of high magic atop a horse trying to get some magical support in as well. Now the Dark Elves, it shouldn't come as a surprise, are led by Malekith and he is atop a black dragon. The front line consists of three units of Harganeth Executioners, and either flank has a unit of Dreadspears. Right behind the front lines, we do have three units of Shades able to provide range support, but also hold their own if push comes to shove in melee. Then we've got two units of Cold One Knights to the side here, Armor Piercing and Anti-Large, very capable against High Elf Cavalry. And finally, this unit of Dark Riders with Shields, Shields to protect them from the ranged fire of Archers as they push in for rear charges, flanking maneuvers, or possibly chasing after Elven Archers. With all that said and done, let's see how it all breaks down. Right away you can see the High Elves are marching forward and getting into position, rotating or pivoting their army to face off against the Dark Elves and force them to pivot as well. Malekith, meanwhile, gets very adventurous from the get-go, pushing forward to get a little bit of damage done, and you can see immediately the High Elf Archers are responding with some range fire focusing down on him as the Mage pushes forward and casts Tempest to lock him in place. Wonderfully done, and at the same time, we do have Dragonhorn going down, adding 25% missile damage, forcing Malekith to drop significantly in health. You see, by the time the Tempest is gone, he's down at about 25% health lost, and rather than retreating, rather than pulling back into safety, Malekith seeks blood. He pushes forward ever so slightly and casts the wonderful Bladewind, doing a lot of damage here. A tremendous amount of hurt delivered to the Spearmen, and then very fortunate that the Bladewind moves in the perfect direction, carving into these archers back here as well, dropping their health and their will to fight significantly. So, wonderfully done, but a massive risk taken there. And you can see Malekith regretting his decision a little bit, curving back, losing about 50% of his health. And meanwhile, the princess here is giving chase. As soon as she notices the shades, though, changes her mind, then changes it back to push forward once more, and then changes it yet again to pull back. Not a bad call. You should be a little bit more patient. You're in a great position right now, so well done pulling back. Malekith was far too adventurous, has taken a lot of hurt. So a cautious push forward here hoping to shut down enemy leadership before lines have to meet. And that's a great call because that'll drop leadership for when engagements do begin. You see again very cautiously creeping forward as the Dark Elves respond in kind as well. Creeping forward, getting prepared for the engagements. Archers waiting for the enemy to get within range. They have superior range of course, so just hang it in there. And you'll see in just a moment's time the Harganeth Executioners get a little bit too close. And in comes that range support. Malekith meanwhile creeping in in the same direction. And that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible decision. You can see the Princess here pushing forward. Malekith wants to get a spell off. You'll see he does get hit once again by Tempest. And in response he pops a Bladewind on the Phoenix Guard. And that's not a terrible idea. The Phoenix Guard have martial mastery, not just martial prowess. So if their health can be brought below 50%, they'll lose all those benefits. Unfortunately... The Bladewind this time does not cooperate, instead veering off into nothingness and falling just short of this clump of archers back here. So that was a huge risk taken for very little gain as the Moon Dragon you can see over here using its breath to cause a decent bit of hurt to these Harganeth executioners on the retreat while Malekith once more caught in Tempest. With all of that range support coming in, his health dropping to well, just under 50% now, and again, the princess as well, doing her best to cause some damage. About a quarter of his health left now, Malekith, just above a quarter. He does retreat once more, and the princess as well, pulling back here, keeping alive, staying away from the shades. There's no reason to risk leadership, a lesson that Malekith needs to learn. Now the archers opening fire at the shades, forcing them back as the rest of the army does creep forward. Again, ever so patient, a lot of skirmishing going on, and it's wonderful to see the use of range support. Meanwhile, you can see over here these Dark Riders with shields are hoping to find an opening to charge into these archers from the rear, but these spearmen are very well managed, just making sure that they keep blocking off any angles of approach that these Dark Riders might wish to use. 
Meanwhile, Malekith continues to stay back now. Maybe he's learned his lesson finally, but the rest of the Dark Elf army does have to close the gap finally. And you'll see as they get closer, the archers are looking for an opportunity to open fire. The princess once again pulling back after that range support does a bit of damage, uses Apotheosis to bring that health back just to make sure she doesn't get caught out of position and out of health, of course. And now finally we have engagements. These White Lines of Trace will have a wonderful time against the Dread Spear while over here the Harganeth executioners dive into the Sword Masters of Hoeth. Not a great call for them. They're going to fall apart, but over here the White Lines of Trace are going to be outnumbered by the Harganeth executioners, two of them, and the Dread Spears piling in, completely outclass the White Lands of Trace, they're not going to have a good time. Now, once again, Malekith creeps forward just a bit too much, uses Blade Wind and Gaze of Malice on the Phoenix Guard, but gets hit by Tempest and all of that range support once again, and the Princess this time committed to charging in Malekith, dropping in health very quickly, very close to dying, and the Princess again comes in and starts beating away at Malekith, wanting to finish him off once and for all, and you'll see Malekith does try to get away, turns around, begins to leave, but the Princess uses Foe Seeker to keep up and close the gap. The Shades, meanwhile, opening fire at the Princess, trying to kill her, trying to force her away, trying to force her to retreat. And you can see here the Cold One Knights are being taken care of by some Harganeth Executioners. They should have been pulled back and forced to charge into some other forces here, shut down some White Lines of Shrace, or finally get back into these archers. You will see the Dark Riders were able to creep in and get in through the gap and close at least two of these units of archers down while the other unit of archers is relatively safe. And meanwhile, we do have murderous prowess kicking in giving a lot of assistance to the dark elves but unfortunately malekith has dropped he was taken care of by the princess so their leadership is in a very precarious situation very quick to drop meanwhile the princess herself in a dangerous situation right now all of these shades focusing down on high elf leadership great call but the princess responds by diving into these shades and popping apotheosis again not only does that help replenish hit points it might also cause fear and scare all of these guys off, but the Cold One Knights very quick to respond. Again, they are anti-large and armor piercing, so they surround the princess and very quickly force her to rout. She's in a very dangerous situation. She was a bit too adventurous there, eager to hunt down Malekith, and as a result of that, you'll see she does fall. Again, very dangerous for high elf leadership now. Meanwhile, up front, you'll see we do have the Harganeth Executioners beating on the Phoenix Guard. Not the ideal engagement for the Phoenix Guard, of course, while over here, the Sword Masters of Hoeth are now being charged in by the Harganeth Executioners, as well as these Dread Spears. So hoping to outnumber them and take care of the Sword Masters, and you can see their health and will to fight is dropping very, very quickly. The Archers, meanwhile, trying to provide some support from that great range they have, while down here, these Dark Riders with shields are quickly being shut down as the Spearmen are able to close the gap over here as they're pinned in place by the White Lines of Trace, and there you have it, the Dark Riders give up on the fight, pulling away. Meanwhile, you'll see over here, we do have these Cold One Knights pushing in, hoping to get engaged as these Sword Masters of Hoeth get completely, completely routed. They do not wish to fight anymore, and these Sword Masters of Hoeth as well, very low on both morale and health in a very dangerous situation. If the Shades just turned around and opened shots off at the Sword Masters of Hoeth, they may have given up on the fight. And from distance, again, the archers just fire away at these various units, and at this point in time, for some reason, unexplicable to me, the Dark Elves give up. Now, a premature surrender from the Dark Elves, who could have won this with a bit of micromanagement and determination at the end, but it's the High Elves that take the day. Fantastic, magical back and forth, and an interesting opening act to the battle made for a short overall fight, but one that was interesting nonetheless. There were definitely ways that both armies could have done better, but this battle had a unique flavor that I felt was worth covering. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content, and keep sending in those battle replays. I do think it's one of the best ways to learn, and it's always nice to see great battles from the community. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.